In this video, I will show you how to make an automatically scaling custom boss health bar, which splits into sections that you can also modify to your desire in Game Maker Studio 2. So, how does it work? After we implement the code, we will have a health bar that will automatically draw markers along the bar, pretty much dividing the bar into sections. So let's say the maximum amount of HP is 500. We will implement a variable that we call something like section value, and let's say we will put that value to 100. With this code, there will now be a marker drawn for every 100 health points along the health bar. And if you do the math, 500 divided by 100 equals 5 markers in total will be drawn. For comparison, if we set the section value to, for example, 10, we would have 50 markers. And the thing is that afterwards you can set the boss's maximum HP and the cutoff value for one section to whatever you want and it will draw the corresponding amount of markers in the right places. Now why would you even want to go with this approach? With these markers you're communicating the boss's health and therefore the difference in difficulty amongst multiple enemies without showing numbers. All you need is a couple sprites, I already prepared mine, I made these in a sprite. We first off have an outline or better said a frame that holds the bar. Then we have an empty bar which pretty much serves as the background. The actual bar and a follow up bar. The follow up bar is pretty much just like the health bar. But it will stay in place when the HP value decreases for a couple moments. Pretty much showing us how much damage we did or how much HP was lost with a single hit. After a couple of moments, it will smoothly lerp and follow the actual HP value. The canvas size of your sprite doesn't matter, but you want to make sure they're all in the same place. For example, the frame shouldn't be offset, it should all align properly. Another very important thing, the center or the pivot point has to be at the very beginning of the bar. Since we will depict the amount of HP by manipulating the X scale of the bar sprite, the lower the HP value is, the more the bar will squash towards this pivot point. So at zero, it would pretty much squash all the way, so it is not visible anymore. So in my case, the center should be right here. I recommend that your bar stays the same horizontally. For example, you shouldn't have any, you know, deviation of pixels like this. Because what will happen is these pixels will squash and it will look ugly. So I recommend not adding details. Also, make a marker sprite. This is what will be drawn on top of the health bar when we divide it into sections. Alright, so I already prepared this little room. And made a camera object. Very simple, we just enable the views and I pick this resolution and I up the scale by 5. So the health bar is clearly visible and so that the final window will be big enough. Alright, then let's get to the actual object that will manage all the variables and will draw the health bar to our game. Go ahead and create the object. I'll just call it boss health bar. We have two events, a create and a draw event. I'm just going to quickly go through all the variables we have in the create event. So first off, we have the... I just called health points max and I set it to a thousand. You can use whatever you want. Then we have the variable that is tracking the current actual amount of HP. And at the very beginning, it's going to be obviously be at the maximum. The third one is going to be the value that the follow up bar is going to represent. And then we have two more variables for the follow up bar. Now, once HP is lost, we did damage or whatever. The health bar will decrease while the follow-up bar will stay in place. And at the same time, the follow-up timer variable will be set to the follow-up timer max. So it will be set to 60, which is equal to 1 second, 60 frames. If your game speed is at 60, it usually is at 60. And after those 60 frames pass, the follow-up bar will also slowly adjust to the hp bar so we pretty much get a full second of seeing how much damage we just did with a single hit all right now then we have the draw event now this is 26 lines of code i will go through this bit by bit now first of all we need a couple local variables so we don't have to reuse things like the name over sprite so just have 
the sprite saved and the width of it and the height of it. Then I'm saving the X position and the Y position where we actually want the bar to be drawn. Now I just picked the middle of the room, right? For the X axis, it's the room's width divided by two. For the Y position, it's the same with the height. Now, since we set the X position um, to the middle and our health bar's center is here, it won't draw the bar like this, but rather like this. Since this is the middle and the center is here, it will be drawn pretty much only on the right side. What we're basically doing is we're looking at the whole sprite width, taking half of it, right? Half of it would be the middle right here. And this part will be subtracted from the X position. So if this is the X position, we're going to subtract half of the width and that way it will be drawn in the middle. And now since the X position of the center isn't zero, but rather six, we also have to make up for that additionally. And that's why we're going to add uh, six pixels onto the whole calculation. And with the Y position, it's the same thing. So now we're actually going to draw the bar. Now we have four image indexes. We have four frames um, in our sprite, each representing something else. And the first thing is the empty bar that's the very background that one will be drawn first um, since anything that will be drawn after will be drawn on top of it we're just going to draw it x on the y skill is one and we just draw it at the uh, x offset and the y offset position remember what i said we are working with the x scale to um, tell the game where we actually want the bar to end um, and since x scale one would be the whole bar anything below one is gonna depict hp below the maximum hp this is all we're gonna do we're gonna divide health points prev by the maximum amount of hp like i said is a thousand if this is 500 it will return 0 0.5 and therefore it will draw the bar only halfway same thing with the actual health bar just the next uh, image index and it's the actual health points uh, variable and not the health points previous uh, variable that we're dividing by health points max and at the very end you just do the same thing with the empty bar you just draw the frame the outline on the very top now that was everything you needed to make the actual health bar and nothing else um, now i'm gonna tell you how to add these markers we need a couple of variables again first we have to get the length of the health bar we're doing this manually and not by using sprite get width since if we would use sprite get width it will take the whole canvas size and that is more than we have what we have is this area right here so this area right here below it says selection area 288 this is the actual amount of health bar that we see on screen so for my sprites it's 288 for yours it's going to be different the next variable this is the one that you will uh you can choose whatever you want pretty much with this um, you're telling the game um, for how many health points you want a marker to be drawn. So every 10 health points, in this case, we would draw a marker. Now, if we have a thousand health points, we would get a hundred markers, which is way too much. So let's just say every 250 health points is one section. Therefore, we would have, in this case, four markers. Now, then we will calculate how many markers we actually need. That is easily done by just dividing the maximum amount of HP by the marker value. Then we have to actually tell where to draw these markers. And that is easily done by just dividing this value right here, the X length, by the marker count. And this will calculate where the marker is drawn within the uh, threshold of 288 pixels. And for the last part, we have a for loop. Now we need a for loop since if you change this value or you change the maximum HP value or whatever, you will get different marker counts every single time. And we're going to start um, with one for I since if we set it to zero, it will draw a marker too much. It will draw it at the very end. And since our health bar already closes, it wouldn't look good. Right. So we're just drawing the health bar marker. Just like the health bars, it will be drawn at the X offset, but we will add the marker offset 
multiplied by the I variable. So the higher the marker count is, obviously the higher the offset is going to be, and it will evenly um, distribute the markers along the 288 pixels that we have. And I subtracted uh, one pixel since the center is at zero, but what we can also do is just slide this over to one, but I just keep like this. Now I had this optional, but this would draw the corresponding number below the marker. So in our case, the one in the middle, it would say 500. But I thought that this is, you know, too noisy. It's too much uh, on screen. So I just had this blurred out, but you can, you can uh, feel free to use it to debug maybe, or, you know, figure out if your numbers are uh, right or not. We obviously need a step event um, in which we can decrease the health and um, the follow-up bar is handled. Now, like I said, the follow-up timer is a timer that will decrease by one every frame, right? So with this statement, all I'm doing is, is I'm saying follow-up timer will be decreased by one every frame. I just put it in a clamp statement to make sure that it doesn't go below zero and not above follow up timer max. Now I like to use the alert function a lot to make smooth uh, transitions. And in this case, we're doing the same. So if follow up timer ran out, if it's zero, we want the health points previous variable. So this is the one that depicts the follow up bars position to lerp towards the health points variable with, uh, in this case, 20%. So the maximum we can put here is one. In that case, it would just jump immediately to it, but we wanted to smoothly adapt after the timer ran out. With this example, we are putting out damage. If we press a button or we the hitbox collides or whatever, health points is decreased and the follow-up timer is set to the maximum value, right? So after this is done, uh, this code will, will, will run each frame and after 60 frames, it will hit zero and the follow-up bar will slowly lerp towards the actual health bar. And to revert the whole process, we have the same thing for adding health points. We're done. So this was all the code. Make sure to put your um, object into the room. Otherwise, none of the code will run, obviously. So let's go ahead and test it out. There you go. Health bars drawn perfectly in the middle of the room. We have our markers. You can barely see them, but they're right here. So the whole health bar, like we said, is a thousand. And um, therefore this is 750, 500 and 250. So we do damage and we don't stop putting out damage. It will decrease, but the follow up bar will stay in place. And only after a second, it will slowly adapt back to the um, actual health bar. Also, as you can see, um, at 750, it draws the bar perfectly below the marker. Same with, you know, 500 and same with 250. Now, just to show you that this is dynamic and um, you can change out the values however you want, we will go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just put the health points max to 50 and... Um, we're going to decrease it by uh, one. And uh, we're going to say the marker value is five. So one section is five health points and uh, we should get nine markers now. So the whole thing is 50. We do one, two, three, four, five. And now we're at 45. As you can see, perfect cutoff with the marker. 40, 35. 30 and so on this is the end of the video i hope you enjoyed i'd appreciate any kind of support on this channel to grow and make more content take care and goodbye for now